You have an idea that successive ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove successive electrons from a nucleus. So here's the nucleus, right? If I show you this particular electron dot diagram, well, this is not really an electron dot diagram, but you get the idea, right? You should be able to tell me what element this is. Has how many electrons? Six. Six. What's the electron configuration? For all intents and purposes, it's? Two-four. Two-four, which means it has six total electrons, which means it's what element? But it has the periodic table. You, you should know, it's carbon. carbon. Good. <laughs> Excellent. So it's carbon. All right? So remember, successive ionization energy is the amount of energy to, to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of the substance. So it's defined as that much energy of one mole rather than just like how much energy is required because that's too vague, right? So the idea is that, but we can talk about it in terms of one atom. If you are to remove this electron, it's going to take a certain amount of energy, okay? So it's removed. Now, oops, it's removed. Now this becomes, only has five electrons now, okay? So it effectively becomes a... C with five electrons, but now it is also what? It is also positively charged. Does that make sense? So it's C1 plus, so it's C positive, right? Now, in terms of removing this next electron, will it be easier or harder compared to that electron there? Why will it be harder? Because the electrostatic attraction is much stronger. Why is it stronger? Because it's closer to the nucleus. Well, okay. Technically, it is closer to the nucleus, but only by a little bit, which is true. That's fair, right? But ultimately, what you've got is a six positive, a six positive charge on the carbon in both examples, right? And it's removing one electron from it. So, but there are five other electrons shielding it on the left. Five other electrons shielding it. So when you remove that one, it takes less energy than this one, which only has four electrons shielding it. Okay? So, the amount of energy to remove this one is more. Okay? Removed needs more energy. Okay? This continues. This continues to remove as you remove them. Okay? So... Carbon, now it only has two electrons in this outer shell. I can remove this one, but it will take more energy to remove. Yes? Mm -hmm. Right. And then I can do it again, but and this is becoming from, this is now a C2+. plus. Yeah? C2+. plus. Right. And then I can do it again. Right, wouldn't it be... Plus, well, once I've it removed it, it will be C+, plus, but it was initially uh, 2 plus, yeah? Right? And we'll get to that in a moment. And then to remove this last one, again, I need to spend energy to remove it. Okay, not four times the amount of energy, but I'm just drawing more arrows just to have that concept there. Okay? And I'm removing it from the 3 plus. Okay, so that's C3 plus. Okay, I remove it, it becomes C4 plus. Happy with that? Now, here we have C going from C neutral to C1 plus, then C1 plus going to C2 plus, then C2 plus going to C3 plus. Okay? So if I was to show this in a table, okay, it would be success uh, energy in kilojoules or something, uh, kilojoules, and... Um, Electron removed. Removed. Something like that. Okay, so we've got the electrons being removed as we go across. Yes? So the first electron... Uh, whatever. First electron removed is this electron here, and it requires a certain amount of energy. I don't know. Right? The second electron move is here. It might require more energy because you've got less shielding effect from those electrons. The third electron being removed here is like, you know, some more energy, and... Is that the third one? Did I get that fourth right? Fourth one you haven't drawn. I have fourth one that hasn't... 
Yeah, that's right, the fourth one I haven't drawn, but you get the idea. The fourth one is that removal there, which will take up a little bit more energy. All right, so, oh no, I've changed it permanently to that color. No, okay, cool, all good. All right, so the real question is what happens when you go to the next one? Who remembers what happens when you go to the next one? Jumps a lot. Why does it jump a lot? I don't know. Okay, so here we have the last one, and now my carbon atom looks like this. Right, with only how many electrons? Two. Two. And where are those electrons? First shell. In the first shell. So not only have I removed all of those electrons in the outer shell, now I've got back down to the first shell. And that first shell is much, much closer. So now the distance becomes an issue. Because the first one, with the first four, it's about the shielding of the other electrons. But with the next one, it's about the fact that now this one is much, much closer. So now this is C4+, plus, right? Oh, uh, uh. C4+. Plus. And to remove this one, it's not just like a little bit extra. It's a lot, lot extra. Okay, because it's so much closer to the nucleus, you need to use a lot more energy to remove it. So what does that show on our successive ionization energy table? It shows that the fifth electron, the fifth electron might need like, you know, 14,000, I don't know, something, something, a very large jump, okay? Because it's going from one energy level to the next, right? And the sixth one will be, you know, something similarly very large, okay? But the concept is that when you want to look at a successive ionization energy, you're looking for the big jump, all right? And that means that all of the ones here are in the uh, outer valence shell, and then all of these are in the next shell, whatever shell that would be, all right? And so therefore you can work out there are one, two, three, four electrons in the outer shell, okay? You also will need to explain why there's such a massive increase, right? Because you're going from one shell to the next, and why there's only minor increases across these ones here because you've lost shielding from the other electrons. Okay, so let's have one example. Let's see how you go, right? If I go, or maybe I'll draw two, I don't know. Right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, energy, uh, let's just draw it again. All right, energy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So let's just say that this one is 300, 500, uh, 1,500, or 1,700, 1,900, 2, 300, and 2, 700. Okay, so where's the big jump? Three. At three. So there are three electrons in the outer shell. Mm -hmm. Three? No, no. Two. two. So you've got to think, okay, here is the big jump. You're correct to say that the big jump is here, but you've got to be able to classify them as, okay, outside here and next side here. So there's only two electrons in the valence shell and probably eight in the next shell, but you can't see it because we don't go far enough. Okay, make sense? What would might be some values? If I start off with 400 here, and I tell you that this one has, you know, five electrons in its outer shell, what might be a possible value for number two? 600. 600. That's a nice one. Then? 800. 800. Then? 1,000. 1,000. And then? 12,000. Wow, we are good at math. And then? 20,000. 20, 20,000. Yeah. All right. And then it might go 29,000. And then it might be a dash. Why might, be, why might there be a dash there? there's only seven electrons in good right it might be impossible to remove the eight, eighth electron because there is no eighth electron if there is no eighth electron what element is this uh, nitrogen. nitrogen okay right this one here or you can say that it's in a group two can you say definitively it's in group two no it could actually be anywhere between group two and 13 except not 13 12 because effectively, lots of transition metals have two electrons in their outer shell, right? Um, but then if it was one, it would be able to say group one. If it was three, you'd be able to say group 13, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Happy with that? Done. Questions? If you have 
uh, an element with like more electrons, is the outer electron require less energy than? Yeah. So if you're looking to compare these two, you would say that this one here, this element here, is probably further down the periodic table because its first ionization energy is lower than that first ionization energy. Okay, so remember, first ionization energy also gives you information. It's one of the trends across the periodic table, and it goes down as you go down the periodic table, and it goes up as you go across the periodic table. Yeah, right? So remember that you can also compare across two different things as well. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Everyone say bye. Bye. bye.